Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm really happy to have you here with me today. Today we are going to make dad's favorite marzipan squares. I named it that because it was my dad's favorite Christmas treat. My dad did not have a big sweet tooth, but this was one Christmas treat that he absolutely loved and I make it in his memory. Also, everyone in our family also loves it. I would be really curious as I make this recipe, if you could let me know in the comment section if this is a treat that you have ever had before or seen anyone else make, because in all my years of going to Christmas gatherings and trying other people's desserts, this is one that I have never found anyone else to make. So I would be really curious to know. I have a confession to make. I tried making this recipe yesterday and for the very first time in all my years of making it, I messed it up. I don't know how I messed it up, but it did not work at all. So this is actually take two of trying to make this. And actually what we're gonna do before we do that is make a quick glaze for this sour cream pound cake that I made yesterday. And I will be including this recipe in my next newsletter. So if you would like a copy of it, then you can sign up for the newsletter if you're not already signed up for it. Um, I did actually film making that in yesterday's video, but I did not plug my microphone in. I don't know why, sometimes it happens where I just get busy and I forget to double check things like that, which is really unfortunate. But it is a really lovely recipe. That is not gonna work. I'm gonna make a mess everywhere. Let's grab a cup measure to go in there. So to make this glaze, we're just going to use a little bit of icing sugar. When I refer to icing sugar, I am talking about powdered sugar. We just call it icing sugar here. So we're gonna add a little splash of vanilla to this. Just a little bit, because we're going to make a just a tiny bit of glaze, not a lot, because the sour cream pound cake is very rich. And then we're going to add a splash of milk. And of course, whenever you're making any type of frosting or anything like that, add the milk just a little bit at a time because it doesn't take much to moisten icing sugar. And as simple as that. So that's probably perfect. I need a plate. This pound cake has um, coconut in it and I am not a fan of coconut, but I have to admit in this pound cake, it's absolutely delicious. And this is a really great recipe for, um, to give out away as a Christmas gift because it holds up really well because it's so dense to transport and most people really, really enjoy it. So it's one I could definitely recommend. There we go. Looks pretty, hey? So we'll pop that back over there and we'll have that for an afternoon snack. And now we'll get into making our marzipan. I do already have some almond frosting made. So this is just a couple tablespoons of butter, some icing sugar, a little bit of almond extract and some milk whipped up. So this I made for yesterday's <laughs> square that did not turn out. So we are going to give it another go today and hopefully it will work. So you're going to need a nine by nine, in this case, eight by eight tray and a little bit of pastry. I made up some pastry yesterday, so you can use whatever pastry recipe that you like. I like the one off the Tender Flake package. It's a really good one, and you can actually find that recipe online. So we're gonna roll this out and put it into the bottom of our dish. As you can see, the back parts of my cupboards are painted, but we're putting trim around the top and down the sides as well. But as yesterday was just not a great day. <laughs> uh, when I painted the, ca the actual cupboard doors, I found that they had been a little bit over sanded. So there were some grooves in the wood and it just did not look good with the paint. So my daughter, who happens to be a professional painter, is going to be coming over tomorrow to help to remedy my messed up cupboards. <laughs> so it was one of, oh, honestly, it was just one of those days where I kind of felt like maybe I should just go back to bed and start over again. So we're just going to roll out our pastry. 
three quarters of an inch thick or so. So you can have it come up the sides like I have here. I just have some extra dough, so I'm gonna do it that way. Or it can just be covering the bottom part of your, um, your dish. And that's fine, either way will work just fine. And then onto this, we are going to put some raspberry jam. So I mentioned this when we were making the thumbprint cookies the other day, that I prefer to use store-bought raspberry jam for Christmas baking, because my homemade jam tends to be very low in sugar, and it just does not taste as good. <laughs> and with Christmas stuff, I don't worry that much about high sugar quantities or anything like that because it's Christmas. So time to let loose a little bit. So we're gonna put around a third a cup of jam on the bottom of this, and I'm actually going to smear the jam up the sides a little bit. And in my opinion, raspberry jam is the jam to use for this recipe. I haven't tried it with another kind, so I can't attest to whether it would taste good or not, but raspberry jam is definitely delicious. It's actually snowing outside right now. So for those of you that don't get snow and enjoy it, we will go outside and I'll, hopefully it's still snowing by the time we actually go outside. I'll give you a little taste of Canadian winter. We have not had snow like I've mentioned at all this year and it has been very warm. So even though it is snowing outside, I'm gonna put a little bit more jam in there. Um, it is warm, just hovering just around freezing which is really nice, We're able to get lots of work done outside. And this year we slacked a little bit over the summertime getting our firewood in. You normally were pretty good at getting our firewood in by August. Uh, this year, not so much. So with getting the cabin done, that's taken a lot of dance time. So we're really happy that we're not having to get wood when it's really snowy, because we're gonna spend the next week bringing in firewood and a couple inches of snow is not bad, but we have gone out to get firewood when there has been a couple feet of snow and that is not very fun. So now we're going to grab a mixing bowl and put in half a cup of butter, three quarters a cup of sugar, and we have our oven preheating at 350 degrees as well. So we're gonna beat this up until it's nice and fluffy. So I'm using evaporated cane sugar and I find that it doesn't beat up as nicely as light and fluffy as regular, um, just your regular white sugar does, but it still works just fine for this recipe. Going to add a quarter teaspoon of almond extract or a little bit extra if you're me. I love almond extract, anything almond flavored I love. And this recipe calls for ground rice. I have not been able to find ground rice anywhere for the last couple of years. Um, you could totally ground, uh, grind up your own rice if you have a Vitamix or if you um, have a coffee grinder or something that you could use. But over the last couple of years, I have been using, where did that bag go? There it is. Um, just rice flour and it has been working just fine. So if you can't find ground rice or you don't wanna make your own, you can use this. So three quarters of a cup of ground rice or rice flour in this case, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. The smell of almond is the smell of Christmas to me because a lot of the recipes that my mom made when I was growing up and now that I make growing up, or not growing up, around the Christmas um, time have almond extract in them. And it's the only time of year that I use almond extract, which is interesting since I love it so much, but kind of makes it a little extra special. So now we're gonna beat this up till it's light and fluffy. Sure enough, getting white all over me. So we're gonna pop this in the oven for 30 minutes. And like with most recipes, I always set it for five minutes less time so that I can check on it and see if it needs that extra couple of minutes and then I don't risk overcooking it. And like with most recipes, I always set it for five minutes less time so that I can check on it and see if it needs that extra couple of minutes and then I don't risk overcooking it. Snow does look like it's starting to slow down a little bit. So I think I'll hold off on cleaning the rest of this mess up and we'll go outside and enjoy the snow together and I'll take you down to see Blossom. Last night was the first night that Blossom was separate, separated from her mom 
and she did great. We have another calf that she can be with at nighttime. And then we milked in the morning and milkweed did great as I knew she would because she's such a great cow. Really nice thing about starting to separate your calves at night like this is that it gives you an opportunity to handle them a lot and makes for really nice milk cows when they get older because they trust you. They learn to trust you and to be handled and on the halter and all of that. Our two calves that we have that we're raising up to be replacement milk cows, so Blossom and Fern, are both really nice temperaments uh, of cows because cows come in with personalities just like people do. And sometimes they're just naturally really skittish. We had one calf born this year who was a, who's, uh, was a bull calf, so it's okay. But he um, was just not friendly right from the very beginning, did not like to be touched, didn't like to be handled, just kind of skittish. And uh, both Fern and Blossom are quite friendly little calves, so that's awesome. All right, let's bundle up and head outside. It's so wintry out here. Snow, very wintry looking, isn't it? Uh, Dan and one of my adult sons, who's here right now, he's right there, and there's Dan. They are going to put the skirting on the little cabin over here that we've been working on. So they got the inside all put up, uh, uh, plywood put on the walls. We are going to be drywalling it, but we're probably gonna wait till spring to do that because he has decided that he wants to stay in the cabin over the winter. He's going to school out of town, but he's gonna be home on the weekends and he wants to stay in the cabin. So he, he's quite fine with <laughs> plywood on the walls. Uh, if we were to drywall it, then it would take that much longer and he wants to get in there right away. So, um, but they do need to get the insulation on the floor or underneath and the skirting done so it can stay warm for the winter. I just love my cows so much. They make me happy. If we had enough land, I would love to be a cattle rancher. Oh, good. <laughs> There's little Blossom. She's up. Looks like she's about to have a snack. So I don't know if I told you this before, but Milkweed does not like her head being pet. If I start petting her head, she'll throw her head around, but she does love her neck, getting a good scratch. And here's our little cutie pie, having a snack. You're such a good girl. Hi, honey. <laughs> I'm really hoping that she's going to end up with this brindle coloring that her mama has because she is quite red looking. So I'm thinking that she probably will end up with it. I just think this brindle coloring is so beautiful. What a little cutie, hey? So you can see how warm it is because she's wet. And then there's this beauty over here who is just my favorite, aren't ya? You are, she is just like a big puppy. She is absolutely the sweetest, sweetest, cow. What a love. Sadly, she did not have a heifer calf this year. She had a bull calf because I would love her genetics in future milk cows here on our farm. I'm just going to see if Fern is over here. It's really nice because we have not had a lot of snow. The cows are still out in the pasture grazing, which is saving us our hay, which is really good because hay was very expensive this year. We had a serious drought. We got half as much hay off of our own fields as we normally do. Um, so we ended up having to buy some and hay prices were outrageous. So the fact that the cows can still be grazing right now is really fabulous. Where is she? Oh, I can see some cow tracks. So we'll follow those and see if we can find her. I have never had a calf change color the way that Fern changed color because she was blonde just like Honey, my favorite cow that I just showed you. Oh, there she is, when she was born. Um, and then has now just about black. But she has some really neat color coloring on her legs. It's almost gray and then her nose is white. Really cute, lots of jersey in her. They came from a dairy that had that was running a couple of bulls. So we're not entirely sure who her sire was or what her sire was, but um, one of the calves came out looking like a Holstein. So 
they definitely had a Holstein bull in there. Thistle is Fern's mom, and she is also a lovely cow. All of the cows that we got this spring from the dairy were just amazing. So here they are. Now, as you can see, Fern turned out just like her mama. The only difference really is that her legs are gray, whereas Thistle's legs are all black. Hi, sweetheart. So the plan with this little guy is we left him uncut, which means we did not castrate him. And he will be our bull that will breed all of our girls for this next year. So her, his mama was actually bred by a Jersey bull. So she's already bred, so we don't have to worry about her being bred by him, but he'll next year be able to breed her thistle and milkweed as well, which is great. Hi, are you actually being like a little bit curious? Can you say hi? Hi, can I pet you? Come on, there you go. <laughs> And then there's you, who's just so cute. So they're all covered in hay because they stick their head in the hay bale, right inside the hay bale that we feed them. Isn't she just such a love? So she doesn't mind her head being pet at all. And honestly, it was a surprise that she turned out to be such a lovely milk cow because she was so feisty when we first got her. But to be fair, they came from a dairy where there, I think they had a hundred cows or something like that. And they were machine milked exclusively and not handled by people very much. So they coming to our farm, which is a small hands-on farm where our animals are kind of livestock and pets. <laughs> they um, had to adjust to a totally new way of life, but they did very well. And all three of them are just gems. Okay, we've talked about this before that winter is not my favorite thing in the world, but even I have to admit that it does look a little kind of picture postcard, doesn't it? Oh, I can show you this because I've had several people ask me whether we're gonna take the plastic off of our high tunnel. So my uh, channel is very seasonal. This time of year, all the way until around March, we do a lot of cooking from scratch, cooking out of my pantry, all of the food that we put up the previous summer, we cook all winter long together. And then when spring rolls around, we get into seed planting and getting the garden all planned. Uh, the thing that I'm probably most passionate about that I share about here is gardening. I love to garden. Love it, love it. <laughs> This is my high tunnel, and you can see we have the rolled up sides rolled up as high as they'll go, and we have them rolled inside out. So they're rolled up to the inside so that the snow can just schluff off the sides. And we did this last year and it works really well. So in the spring, we're planting the garden and planting the garden. Throughout the summer, we're growing the garden together. And then in the kind of late summer and into the fall, we do tons of preserving. This kind of lifestyle is very seasonal, so my channel really reflects that. Let's take a quick peek on the chickens and see how they're doing. Hey guys. So our chicken coop has this outdoor covered run, which is awesome because the chickens can be outside, but still be protected from the snow. Hi everybody. How you doing? And then they have the area in there that we close up at night and stays nice and warm. Hi guys. I would not recommend having ducks in with chickens. I have ducks in with chickens, but I only have two. And that seems to be a manageable number, but ducks are notoriously messy and they splash in the water and just make a huge mess. And so I find that keeping ducks separate um, is a better option. We only have our two ducks and they are just pets <laughs> for the most part. So they get to be in the chicken coop. <laughs> Boy, that looks fun. <laughs> I said, that looks like fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so much fun, hey? <laughs> Just gonna get it done though? That's awesome. I guess better a couple of centimeters than a couple feet, right? <laughs> okay, our timer should be going off here any minute. Dan does have the deck all done up at the bunkie, but he's gonna wait. He wants me to wait until to show you until he has it all cleaned up. So that'll probably be in the next video, but it is looking so beautiful. 
So I think I figured out what the issue was with my marzipan yesterday. Um, it almost looked like it was going to happen again today, but it was, it turned out to be all right in the end. I think that I had way too much butter in my pastry dough. And when that butter melted, it just made everything kind of mush um, in the marzipan. So uh, this time I noticed, cause I could see all the um, butter kind of bubbling up the side. So I just drained some of it out, which I think made all the difference with this one. So it's not the prettiest marzipan I've ever made, but I think it's gonna taste just fine. So right now I am just putting together some lunch and we are having a, broccoli salad which is one of our favorite salads so we have the broccoli all cut up into small florets and then a chopped up onion red onion um, you can put other onion in here as well but red onion is the one that we prefer i am frying up some bacon over there as well that we are going to add into this and then we are going to cut up some little cubes of cheddar, add that into this as well, and then I'll show you how we make the dressing. I wasn't planning on doing another recipe in today's video, but since we are making it and it is delicious, I thought I would show you how we do it. You can add grated cheddar to this salad as well, but we like it cubed up. I know my cutting board is looking a little worse for wear. <laughs> There's some really deep cut marks in it, but that is because we used this for butchering one year and what were we using? Oh, I think we were using a Sawzall to cut and hit the cutting board a couple of times when we were cutting. It still works just fine. Okay, I'm just gonna pull our bacon off the heat over here and let it cool down a little bit. Whoa, so it doesn't melt the cheese when we add it. I'll put this recipe down in the show notes for you as well. This is the same recipe I've been using for this salad. It's called bodacious broccoli salad for years now. We're going to add around a cup and a half of mayo, red wine vinegar, a half a cup, some black pepper, and this calls for two teaspoons of black pepper, which I think is way too much. So just around a teaspoon or so. We had lasagna last night and there's some leftover lasagna, so I'm gonna heat that up. Two to have with the salad, although this salad on its own um, is a meal, at least it is for me. I enjoy it very much and because it has the meat and the cheese in there as well, as well it's pretty filling. Going to add just under a quarter cup of sugar, tablespoon of lemon juice, and a little bit of salt. I find whenever I am using sugar in any type of salad dressing, stir it up and then leave it to sit for 20 minutes or so just to allow all that sugar to dissolve so you don't have crunchy bits and that's particularly important if you're using an evaporated organic cane sugar like this, just because like I mentioned earlier, it tends to be a little bit bigger, the granules do, than regular sugar. So we'll let that sit for a minute and then tidy up everything else and add our bacon to our salad and get everything mixed up. Ended up having to get a bigger bowl. So here's our dressing. I might need to make some more dressing too. It's a lot of broccoli. I am going to add some cranberries to this as well. And I have some sunflower seeds that need to be used up. So I'm going to put them in here as well. Okay, I do think though I am gonna add at least a little bit more mayonnaise to make it a little bit creamier. And splash more vinegar. There we go, that looks perfect. So let's grab our marzipan and cut into that and see how it looks. See what I mean about not very pretty? <laughs> it's not pretty at all. But hopefully it tastes all right. Definitely an issue with my crust. 
looks okay on the inside. So let's give it a taste test. That crust is awful. <laughs> I don't know what I did. And you can hardly bite through it because <laughs> it's so tough. Oh my goodness. The frosting and the filling and the jam all taste fantastic. So I'm sure my kids aren't going to mind having to kind of chew, <laughs> chew through the crust a little bit. Um, so uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to make some new pie crust because that one was just, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> an absolute fail. Oh my goodness, that's funny. Two tries, but at least now I know it was the crust. Um, the filling and all of that, it was perfectly fine. We are going to now dig into this delicious salad and have some of this <laughs> marzipan flop for dessert. I hope that you enjoyed today's video, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.